so we are going to start with scala that is a programming language that we are going to study in first two days so it's day one of two so today and tomorrow we'll be studying about this programming language scala and from next week onwards we'll go to spark what is spark and so on so first we'll be studying scala and today's day one of two for scala so we'll be studying scala and it is used a lot for a spark programming so that is the reason we are studying scala what is spark and all will go in more detail when we start with spark in next week so first let us try to study what is scala what is scala so scala is a programming language that runs on a jvm so in other words wherever you can run the java code whichever machine be it mobile be it any pc using windows mac os or linux or be it anything else like android tv box and so on wherever you can run java you can run the scala code because it runs in the same jvm it runs in java version machine only so wherever you can run java you can run scala as well so it can be used for variety of application wherever you can use java you can use this scala then why to study this scala because scala is a general purpose programming language first thing what is a scala just scala is a general purpose programming language then it is concise elegant and type safe so if it is having some string then it will only get a string value it won't get an integer value so if if there is any variable that is previously defined as string it will only get a string if it is defined as int it will only get int it was this language was developed by martin odeski and he started working in the year 2001 onwards and made this language in 2004 and moreover this language is on top top of java only so this was developed by this guy let us see more what is scala scala is statically typed what do you mean by statically typed is let's say you are you defining a variable so you to define a variable over here you have to use var so var stands for variable so i'm defining a variable let's say i'm defining a variable and giving the name to a variable as x and i say variable x is equal to arish so if you have any programming knowledge before then you know that a variable can be a integer that is it can have numbers you can store a numbers into it like 1 2 3 4 it can be a float i am writing some basics only it can be 1.1 1.2 1.3 1. and so on it can be a character that is it can have a b c d and so on it can be a string i will not go more into details these are only basics it can be like harish something x y z a b c and so on so these are some basic data types that we use there are others as well for now that this much only so integer is like something it will store integer value without a decimal 1 2 3 4 float is with the decimal character is a single character a b c d and string is a multiple characters harish x y z a b c and so on so since i am storing this harish into it what is a variable type for it what is a variable type string okay great so the variable type over here is string 
So the variable type over here is string. And uh, the beauty of this language is you don't have to say it is a string. You just have to write var x and just assign the value. You don't have to say it is a string. It will once you assign the value looking at the value, it will automatically consider it is a string. You don't have to define the things as okay. Harish is a string. No need to define. You just say that var x is equal to Harish. Similarly, you can say uh, var y is equal to 12. So it will automatically understand it is a number. It is a integer. So you don't have to define it. You don't have to say that it is an integer. You just have to say it's a variable y is equal to 12. It will automatically understand that it is a integer. Okay. Then what is statically type? Statically type means since I, this now this value is having this variable is having Harish. That means it is a string. Now the string can I assign x is equal to 12? x is equal to 12 12 means what is it 12 is a integer so 12 is an integer can i assign 12 to x no because x i have already used and x is a string so if i put 12 to x it will say that it will give you the error saying that cannot assign cannot assign integer to a string cannot assign integer to a string variable something like this so if you try to do this where x is equal to Harish and then you change x to x is equal to 12 then it will give the error that cannot assign integer to a string variable if you are not mute can you mute yourself if you have doubt you can unmute and ask okay uh, where x is equal to Harish and you have assigned a string to it x is equal to 12 once you say that it says that oh it is an integer and you are trying to assign an integer to a variable x which is already defined as string because it's already used up as a string so you cannot do this that means it is a statically typed and uh, you cannot just change the variable type any doubts in this Anyone? No. Anyone, any doubts, just stop me in middle and ask. We'll go to next thing. It supports mixed paradigm. That is, you can use this programming language as an object oriented programming language. Oops. That is object oriented programming language that is oops or else you can also use it as a functional program functional programming so what do you mean by object oriented programming languages on a higher level you will be defining everything as an object and uh, it have it will have all the properties like inheritance encapsulation polymorphism etc etc but in case of us uh, using a scala with spark we won't be using oops so scala supports both scala will support both it will support oops that is object oriented programming language whatever you used to use in java that is you will create a classes you will create an object then you will do uh, polymorphism encapsulation inheritance and so on but in case of scala you will not use oops concept what you will be using over here is functional programming that is you will define everything as a function and you will call that function to process we'll be seeing the program when it will be more clear so the first thing that we are saying is for scala scala supports both it is a mixed paradigm it supports oops that is uh, all the properties such as encapsulation in inheritance and so on you can google the properties of oops but we are not going to use oops property while we are doing spark we will be using only functional programming we will be using only functional programming and functional programming was first brought in by scala and after scala java copied it 
so java also has a functional programming starting with java 8 but scala was the first to bring the functional programming and then java copied it so scala was the first and java copied it from scala to bring the functional programming okay so scala is supporting the mixed paradigm oops as well as functional programming what is a functional programming we'll see more uh, how we are using functions a lot when we start with programs today in the second half as well as tomorrow and uh, java it supports oops scala also supports oops but we won't be using oops then next thing everything is object in scala everything is object in scala in java also you will say that java is also object oriented programming language but java is again not a hundred percent object oriented programming language because it still has a primitive data type such as int string char and so on because the java is not a hundred percent programming object oriented programming language why because it still has a primitive data type java still has a primitive data type so java what i'm saying is java is not 100 percent object oriented programming language but scala is a hundred percent object oriented programming language reason being even the int string and char is not a primitive data type over here int is also not like this small int you will have a big int capital int capital s string char so everything over here is defined as a class as an object so here everything is defined as a class as an object but in case of java java is not a hundred percent object oriented programming language it's not having all the objects like it still has a primitive data type as int string char and so on people who have worked on java will easily relate it if you have not worked uh, anyhow it doesn't matter when you are working uh, on Scala so for you just need to remember that whenever you are defining something to be an integer it's not small int like Java it is a capital int capital I int capital S string capital C care okay so it does not have a primitive data type so I will write the next thing does not have have primitive data type okay so let us just repeat this part as uh, uh, i will just ask the question you can answer uh, scala supports mixed paradigm what all things it supports it supports oops as well as functional, functional programming okay are we going to use oops no okay so in spark we don't use oops we'll be using a functional programming so what do you mean by a functional programming it means that you will write small small functions or you will write the logic in a function and then call that function okay uh, the next thing we said that everything is a object in scala so in java you were having small int string char that was a primitive data type but in Scala, you don't have a primitive data type. You have everything as an object. Even the data type is capital INT, capital string, capital char, and so on. Anyone, any doubts till now? No. Okay. Let's see more detail about Scala. So we it supports functional programming. It supports functional programming. Functional programming means simply write a function and call it. So whatever is your business logic, you will be writing your business logic into the program as a function and you will call that particular function. Then next thing is it supports mutable and immutable so what do you mean by a mutable and immutable is in case of mutable you will be defining it as where 
x is equal to abc so what is this abc is it an integer float character or a string 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 okay, string. okay. so did i say it is a string over here no i did not say anything it will automatically take that it is a string i just said that where x is equal to abc and let's say i say x is equal to xyz is it a string integer char or float string okay so it is again a string so can i change the value from abc to xyz like this yes yes right because yes. i am just assigning a string if i assign uh, some other thing let's say if i assign some other thing let's say i write over here as 12 so 12 is an integer so it will definitely give you a error how can you assign a 12 that is an integer to a string but let's say i am just assigning the same thing that is a string i can do that if i am assigning a string i can do that let's go to immutable let's say val x is equal to 12 so in case of immutable instead of writing var you write a val instead of writing var you write a val let's take a same example in fact instead of writing 12 i will again write abc so instead of writing var we have written val and what is this abc is it a int float character string the string string right so it will automatically take string now if i want to change the value from abc to xyz now i cannot change the value so immutable means once you have assigned the value to a particular variable in the entire pro program you cannot change the value of it in the entire program you cannot change the value once the value is assigned you cannot change its value so mutable means you can change the value immutable means you cannot change the value itself even if you, even if you are changing from abc to xyz the same string you cannot change the value so mutable means you can change the value something that is a mutable state that is you can change it immutable that is it is not a mutable state that is you cannot change the value for it so that's the reason you can change it it is also called as a var that is variable var that is variable that is it can vary you can change its value but this is a val val means value you cannot change it once assigned is assigned so is it clear what is a mutable and immutable any doubts anyone no okay then let's go ahead next thing function are first class citizen function are first class citizen so it's like sum of a comma b whenever i say sum of a comma b it means that it is a function and this is something parameter that is i am passing that is i am passing some parameter i am passing some 2 comma 3 to a function that can do a sum of it so this is how you write a function and function is a first class citizen what do you mean by function is a first class citizen over here is like in other programming languages you must have seen that you can call a function and pass the variable to it but in case of scala you can also do this sum of difference of something that is in the first example you were passing the variables a and b was a variable it was a variable that is you were passing a variable to a function and what this function will do it will uh, will be writing some logic so that it can add the value add 2 plus 3 but in this case what we are doing over here is this is a function and this is also a function so both are function and if you see over here that 
we are passing a function to another function we are passing a function to another function so this is called as a passing function to a function we will be seeing this in a program as well so in case of scala instead of just passing a variable you can also pass a function to a function so that is the reason it is called as a function as a first class citizen it was first introduced by scala in the year 2004 then java copied it in java 8 so you can also do this in case of java as well in java 8 Moreover, once you are studying Spark, once you apply for job, then in that case, either you will be working with Spark with Scala. Probability is more than 50-60%. You will be working on this. You will be working on Spark with Java for around 25% or 20% I will say. Uh, Python again 20% depending on where you are going so I will say 20 percent okay so if you are working on a spark it is high probability that you will be working with a programming language as Scala that is the reason we are studying Scala it is also possible that you will be working with Java or Python. Python is a very less probability because Python is mostly used with data science, machine learning. If you are going into that part, if you are going into a machine learning in Spark, then it is possible that you are working more on Python and so on. But mostly you will be working on uh, Scala in Spark. So any doubts so far anyone? Anyone any doubts? No doubt. Okay, we'll go ahead. So why we are studying Scala? It is more flexible. You already saw that we don't even have to define a variable type. We don't also say that it is a string. X is equal to ABC. Even you can say that, but it is not mandatory. So it, you can just assign the value and it will be understanding whether it is a string or integer. It is more flexible, improves productivity. You don't even have to write a semicolon inside after every line like you do in Java. But if you still want to write, you can still write. But no need to write this semicolon afterwards. It runs on JVM only. The same Java virtual machine where the Java code runs. So it is something like this. Once, once you write a Scala program, you give it to a compiler. Scala C. So that will compile for you. After compiling, it will make a byte code. The byte code will be running on JVM. So in fact, the performance is even better than Java. Performance is better than Java. And the good part is the spark, the entire framework the framework that we are studying for processing big data spark framework that we'll be studying from next week this spark framework is itself written in scala the framework itself is written in scala so that's the reason even more people prefer to work on spark with scala rather than any other programming language because the entire framework itself is written in scala program So is this Scala programming language only used in big data? No, it is used for uh, web development. Used in Spark. 
used in scalding which is like a map reduce programming only for processing big data then it is used in neo4j which is a nosql database to store the data it is a graph database so basically it is used at many places you can use scala for any other thing wherever you can use java for so wherever you can use java you can also use scala what james gosling need has to say about java is about scala is james gosling is considered as father of java programming it is considered as he is considered as father of java programming language who wrote java himself and he says that if i were to pick a programming language other than java it will be scala so if he wanted to pick any programming language he says other than java it will be scala of course he will not say bad about his own programming language no one will say bad about their own children so it's like the same so he's saying that if i was to pick any programming language other than java it will be scala so even he considered scala as a best programming language and in fact uh, the scala is even better than java easier to write easier to program easier to use and in fact the scala is much ahead of java even java is copying most of the things from scala so first scala comes with some feature and then java copies it okay so going ahead scala you can either use it with repl that is read evaluate repl stands for read evaluate print loop that is nothing but uh, just a simple command line so you can use the scala with repl that is you can use it in a command line or you can also use in a ide that is integrated development environment that is you can use some ide like eclipse or intellij or something else so you can use this programming language you can practice on scala or work on scala either using repl that is on a command line or you can also work on scala using ide that is eclipse and intellij all these things repl and ide will be using as we go ahead let's go ahead anyone what do you mean by immutable and mutable now we already discussed how do you define immutable well well how do we define mutable well okay once defined can you change the value of immutable no no that is you can only read from it once you have given the value can you change the value of mutable yes yes that means you can read as well as right okay so this is about immutable and mutable we already discussed this before so this is about the introduction after this we'll be going bit into programming for going into programming let's see what we need to do we need to go into this after this part 3 spark scala installation we need to go over here and we need to do this installation first 
for now we'll just share this shareable link okay so you have shared the link over here you can just click on this link and go over here and we need to do this installation it is having two parts uh, REPL that is for command line and the second part over here is for IDE IDE installation installation for integrated development environment using Eclipse you can also do it for IntelliJ so it is having two parts and you also need some installable so this is a Java you need to install Java first and then you need to install Scala as well this is Scala uh,